Hello everybody and welcome back to a new video. Today we are doing a speed build of a challenge that my friend set for me. The lot is in Brindleton Bay. It is on this lovely little beachfront area. So if we go into the lot I'll show you the shell I had to work with. So this is the shell. It's two floors with a balcony, a roof, a ladder on the outside and this is the outside of the building and then if we go down here's the second floor and here is the ground floor and here are the rules beachfront for Sandra and Mia two elder friends they are very different and would like their rooms to reflect their own personal styles but also for the communal areas to balance both of them Sandra is a bohemian and wants to be surrounded by plants while she paints Mia likes everything to be light, bright and fancy. She'd love a cosy spot to read and take in the sun's rays. They'd both like to entertain family, so make sure there's a table that can seat at least six. No demolition, 45,000 limit. So, let's get into the speed build. So, I actually found this challenge quite difficult. This is firstly two styles that I don't tend to build with I don't really know what I would consider my build style to be I think it's probably just quite basic and to build firstly bohemian style I do use a lot of plants I mean what sims player doesn't use a lot of plants in their builds but I've never built what I would consider to be bohemian so I, I actually had to look up what bohemian means um, in order to do this build to make sure that I got the star right and then fancy also is sort of out of my comfort range so as we can see as well the floor plan was something I really struggled with because it's quite a small house and I wanted to fit both bedrooms up on the second level um, my thinking going into it was to have the sunspot be the balcony and the bohemian style only have a bedroom because I don't really know why actually that's just what I what my thoughts were I did have a few ideas but I also considered turning the balcony into um, an art area for the bohemian sim but ultimately I went with the balcony being the sunspot so yeah this build was this build was quite difficult compared to what I'm used to but I do quite like how it turned out and as we'll see through the the speed build I do have to go over quite a lot of different things and redo different rooms and also <laughs> while I was editing this I realized that I haven't put a toilet I haven't put a door on the downstairs toilet so I will do that when we go in to do the house tour at the end of this speed build. Now this speed build is approximately 30, 35 minutes long and I can't talk about what I did for 35 minutes because I just don't have that much to say other than what I've already said. So I thought I'd do a little get to know me while you're watching this speed build. So I have some questions from some of my friends and some people on Twitter and also I'll just tell you a little bit about who I am. So my name is Amber, I am 28 years old and I'm originally from a little island between the UK and France called Guernsey, which is part of the Channel Islands, um, but I moved to the UK in 2021. I'll tell you a little bit about what it's like to grow up in Guernsey. It is very sheltered. It's a very sheltered life. It's a very, very small island and because it's so expensive to get on and off the island you don't you can't go on holidays much unless you come from money so i've been on i've been on trips i've been to france quite a few times and i've been to the uk but before moving to the uk those are the only places i had been was france and the uk and and the other channel islands so there's there's jersey sark um lehu island Alderney although I've not been to Alderney so it is I don't know how to describe the culture but it is a big culture shock moving from Guernsey to the UK and I'm used to everybody knowing everybody and the whole island sort of has this 
familial feeling to it everybody knows everyone you know people would come up to me and ask if, ask if I am such and such granddaughter or such and such daughter and then it and then it would turn out that they'd worked with my parents or my grandparents or they were friends with them so really my, we used to joke that my dad had spies everywhere because everybody knows everyone so guaranteed it'll be if you're doing something guaranteed someone will find out so it is a, it's a beautiful island absolutely stunning and i would highly recommend going on holiday there if you can afford it but living there certainly with the cost of living the way it is moving to the uk was the best decision i've ever made and i moved to the uk primarily because my special interest is mythology and history and i really wanted to work in one of the museums so i started looking at jobs at the british museum and the national history natural history museum and stuff and ultimately decided while I was looking that actually even if I couldn't get a job in the museums I really wanted to move to the UK so that's what I did in August 2021 I moved to the UK and I live here with my two cats and my partner so a little bit more about me I have been playing The Sims for oof, I, I genuinely cannot remember a time when I wasn't playing The Sims. I used to have, I think on DS, I had Sims 2 Pets and uh, that was I think the first Sims game I ever played and I, I really really enjoyed it. I loved, in Sims 2 Pets you you ha were like a vet or was it a vet or a grooming salon? I think it was a vet but you could groom the, the pets as well. I seem to remember grooming dogs in the game. <laughs> um, you sort of set up your own business and, and looked after the animals and things and I really enjoyed that. I am a huge animal lover as well so that really appealed to me. And then my sister had My Sims on the Wii which was an interesting game. Uh, <laughs> and we also had Sims 2... Oh. It was a Sims 2 game on the DS, but I can't remember what it was called, but it was one where there was um, aliens and you were sort of in this like deserted town and there were aliens there. I'll have to look up, look it up and find out what the name was because it was a really fun game. Um, so we used to play that and then I played Sims 3 on my laptop back in the day and my favourite expansion pack was University and I loved sending my sims to university and actually more back to my personal life i di i was supposed to go to university after doing my a levels but unfortunately i started really struggling with my mental health so at that point i had to pull out of doing my a levels and i lost all of my university places but i am now doing a degree with the open university in classical studies which i'm thoroughly enjoying because it, it's all to do with what i'm passionate about which is mythology and I don't, I'm not sad anymore that I didn't go to university at when I was 18 because my life would be so different to what it is now. So, you know, everything happens for a reason, I believe. And the reason I didn't go to university back then was because I was going to do it now. And when I wanted to go to university in the past, it was to do psychology because I ironically wanted to work in mental health. But now I'm studying a subject that I really thoroughly enjoy. And I think that that is the most important thing. I'm not doing it for a career, I'm doing it because I genuinely love the subject. I'm genuinely passionate about it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, some questions I've had from my friends. What's my favourite part of The Sims? That's such a good question and I genuinely don't know the answer. There is... I, I think it's building. I genuinely love building. But I also love doing sort of rags to riches and legacy challenges like the beginnings of a legacy challenge where you're kind of struggling for money but you know you're living in like a smaller house and there's you know you're, you're trying to make money in whatever way you can I quite enjoy that and I don't really know why but I do feel like once you're at a point in The Sims where you've got all the money you could ever want like more money than you need I really struggle to find it more fun to play I don't, I don't know why. 
I think it's probably something to do with I don't know just when you've got all that money what's the point of going to work and, and things like that you know and then it kind of gets a little bit samey I think maybe that's what it is um, three games I love other than The Sims Stardew Valley is um, a huge favourite of mine I really adore Stardew Valley um, Animal Crossing uh, I'm trying to think of a game that's like not a cosy game because those two are quite cosy games. I really love the Assassin's Creed games and my favourite is Assassin's Creed Odyssey because it's set in Greece, ancient Greece. And I truly, I cannot express how much I love Greek mythology. It's such a huge passion of mine. And I have been debating doing a series where I do speed builds and over the top I tell you different Greek myths so let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in because I think I would thoroughly enjoy doing something like that I I could talk about Greek mythology for hours and hours and hours um, I just find it so fascinating I am not a religious person but if I was I think Greek mythology like the Greek gods would be what I would choose to believe in um, because it, I just really love it. My favourite Sims music genre is, and this will surprise nobody, Winter Holiday. Because, as I've said before, I love Christmas. It is my favourite time of year. I think it's been my favourite time of year since I was a kid. I genuinely adore Christmas. Firstly, I don't like heat, so I, I don't really get on very well in the summer because I find it a bit too hot and especially now that I'm in the UK because in Guernsey the island is so small that you are never more than like 10-15 minutes from the beach whereas I live inland um, and the closest beach is probably an hour or so away and I really miss having that easy access to the sea because I grew up swimming so much in the sea and that is obviously very cooling because the sea is freezing so <laughs> I do really struggle these days with the heat even more so and so not only that but also I just have I grew up with quite a big family and Christmas was always sort of the time of year when we would all organize to see each other and and we would play games and have all sorts of food and things like that and so I only really have good memories associated with Christmas and so yeah for that reason it is truly my favorite time of year i love it i love it so much so winter holiday <laughs> is my favorite christmas music uh my favorite music on the sims and do i ever get a weird existential crisis while playing the sims yes <laughs> it is an interesting feeling isn't it when you're playing with fake people and you're living out there like it's like living vicariously through your sims and maybe that's why i enjoyed the university pack so much when i was younger because I, I wanted to go to uni myself so i was having my sims go to uni and i was living vicariously through them <laughs> um so potentially maybe that was what it was we'll see but yes i do get a weird existential crisis and especially when sims die when i'm playing a legacy challenge and sims die that that always throws me a little bit um so i feel like you know the easiest way to combat that would be to pay to play long lifespan so that it doesn't happen for, very often or as quickly but because of the way i play where i play legacy challenges and things i always i'm pretty much always playing on short lifespan and the other thing with playing with short lifespan is i've recently been diagnosed with adhd and i do get quite bored easily and so i think that's part of the reason why I love legacy challenges so much because you're on the clock against this shorter lifespan to get everything done and you know it nothing is the same so the legacy challenge we're playing at the moment you know she we're two episodes in three episodes in and she's already pregnant and in the next few episodes we'll sort of be moving on to the next generation already and it will only have been say five or six episodes of um one generation and then we move on to a new one so it doesn't last super long and i think that really appeals to my adhd brain um because i do get quite restless and bored easily now another question i had was what inspired me to start gaming 
and I honestly do not know the answer. I have been gaming for as long as I can remember. I've had, I still have a Nintendo 64, which I've had for genuinely, I cannot remember not having it. I think the Nintendo 64 came out in 98, I believe, and I was born in 1995, and I think my, my, I think my parents got me that 64 sort of when it came out and my favourite games to play on that are Super Mario 64 and Banjo-Kazooie um, they hold so much memory for me especially Banjo-Kazooie my, my, me and my brother we took turns we played it and every time we died or completed um, every time we died or we got a jigsaw piece we swapped over and we completed the game together doing that and it is one of the best memories I have collaborating with him and playing with him over the course of a few I think maybe a few days where we just gr grinded this game and we got it finished and it was the first time I remember completing the game so that is a really good memory for me and memories of my mum playing Super Mario 64 with me as well when I was a kid really love it really really love that and as I've grown up we've gotten quite a lot of Nintendo consoles so we, we got a Wii um, I had a DS I have I have a Switch now and I still have my 64 of course I'm, I'm never gonna get rid of that and I would be so interested to see how much it's worth in like 50 years <laughs> that would be fascinating to see how the value goes up but I also had a PlayStation 1, a PlayStation 2, a PlayStation 3 and now I have a PlayStation 4 I played all sorts of games when I had my PlayStation 1 I remember in particular this Mary Kate and Ashley game I don't know if anybody else played it and I think you're in like a shopping center and you have to go into each shop and each shop is a different activity and one of the activities was this skiing game I don't remember the name of the game but that was quite fun and on my PlayStation 2 I had um, Need for Speed Most Wanted which was a great game and also I had this Stitch game I think it was called Stitch Experiment 626 or something like that and that game was so fun and I used to play that with my brother and sister a lot and that game holds a lot of really sentimental memories for me and I, I really wish I still had my PlayStation 2 because those games are hold so much nostalgia I would love to play them again and I'm just trying to think of other games my mum used to play, I don't know if you have ever heard of Big Fish Games, but I think they're a website that do different games. And she used to play games like Cake Mania, Virtual Villagers, and there was this one that I think was called something like Jewels of Atlantis, and I really enjoyed playing those as well. I used to, and as evidenced by my Facebook memories, which are so cringy, um, I, I would make myself a mint hot chocolate and I would play Virtual Villagers for hours. I really enjoyed it. Actually, I would love to play Virtual Villagers on the channel, so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in because it is such a fun little game. I'd be really up for playing that. And yeah, so I've just, you know, been gaming sort of as, for all my life as long as I can remember. So I, I think it's only natural that... I'm still gaming now even as a 28 year old I don't I don't think I'll ever stop enjoying games I think it for me is certainly a way to kind of escape reality and escape the scariness of adulting because adulting is is something I find quite scary and what was the thing that attracted me to gaming I genuinely don't know because it's just something I've grown up with my dad and I used to play Halo together we all used to play Burnout, which is this race, well it's not a racing game, but it's a game where you have to kind of cause as much destruction as possible, cause like the biggest car crash. And I have a lot of fun memories associated with playing that game. Yeah, so I don't think anything first attracted me, I think it's just that I l just literally just grew up with it. And yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoy gaming. So if you have any suggestions for games to play on the channel, let me know because I'm down for trying anything. I I want to play cozy games because 
And this leads me on to my next point of why I've decided to set up a channel. I would like to create a safe space online for neurodivergent people like me. I've been creating content online for the best part of probably about seven or eight years I think. I used to have a blog where I talked about my experiences with depression and anxiety and I was actually on ITV News when I was probably about 19 or 20 talking about it so or maybe a little bit older maybe 21 22 and I have always my intention has always been to be the person I needed when I was poorly with my mental health and so that's why I am quite a big advocate for mental health awareness and things like that and more so recently as I have done a lot more research and learnt about myself a lot more and learnt suspected that it wasn't just anxiety and depression I was struggling with it was ADHD um I've been advocating a lot more for like disability rights and neurodivergent people and and stuff like that so my aim with this YouTube channel is to create a safe space online for people like myself who find it difficult to relax, difficult to focus, difficult to concentrate, difficult to adult, anything like that. Basically be the person I look up to when I am struggling. So I watch a lot of, I watch basically almost 100% of what I watch is YouTubers. I watch people like Lil Simsy, Call Me Kevin, um, James Turner, uh, Poxiel, like people who I feel safe watching their content. They create they create a safe space and cozy vibes. And I don't think anyone else who watched Call Me Kevin would not say that he creates cozy vibes, but he's so funny and his personality is is good vibes. So I've been inspired by them to create create a space like that for people because I've just always wanted to help people. That's always been what I've wanted to do, whether it was working in mental health or blogging about mental health. I am just very passionate about helping other people so they don't feel the way I did when I was unwell. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what I want to do. That's why I've set up this channel. And I hope that you will come along for the ride because I, I think it's going to be fun and I will be twitch streaming as well when we move house we're hoping to move house at the moment and when we do I will be twitch streaming which I'm yet to figure out a schedule I'm thinking currently my legacy challenge videos go out every Sunday because I want to help people with the Sunday scaries which I do really struggle with sometimes so my legacy challenge videos go out every Sunday and I tend to do a bonus video at some point during the week and I think what I will do is potentially stream on Wednesdays because I think that'll be a good way to break the week up so we'll have a think once I've moved and come up with a good schedule for streaming alongside YouTube videos and once I've come up with a schedule I will obviously let everybody know via Twitter and all my other socials. Speaking of, I have set up a link tree which will be in the description below which will have links to all of my different social medias if you want to follow me on there. I have also set up a Patreon. Um, it is free at the moment, I'm not charging anybody to use it. Um, but once, once I have hit a few more subscribers I will sort of introduce some benefits and tiers and things but if you want to go follow me on there then feel free I don't really know what else to say about myself um, if I had any three sims traits to describe myself it would be loyal family oriented and cat lover I think and if I had to pick any negative traits, uh, paranoid. <laughs> I 
I can't think of what the other negative traits are. Paranoid. Maybe glutton. I do love food. I'm a big foodie. But not in like a snobby kind of way. Um, I love to cook a lot and bake a lot. I think I inherited my baking skills from both of my parents. They're very good bakers. I really really enjoy baking and post a lot of photos on my social media of things I've cooked and baked so check those out. My specialty which I will be making in the next few days is chocolate cake with salted caramel baileys buttercream icing and what I do is I crumble up some Cadbury's caramel or galaxy caramel on the top and gorgeous cake. Um, or like a vanilla cake with strawberries and cream baileys buttercream icing. I made that for my mum's birthday one year because we both really love Wimbledon and her birthday is around Wimbledon time so I made her a strawberries and cream cake for Wimbledon. Um, Yeah there's not really much else to tell to be honest about me. So let's move on to the build. As we can see I'm working on the kitchen at this point and if you see that little nook with the two washing machines originally that was what the plan was for that to be like a, a small little utility nook but you'll see uh, towards the end that I've quickly realized I don't have a guest bathroom because the two uh, the two people living in the household they have ensuite bathrooms and there's no guest bathroom so I very quickly turn that into a small little toilet area but I forget to put a door on it <laughs> so I will be putting a door on it when we go in to do the tour And here I'm just trying to add some more plants to the build because one of the rules was that the communal space had to reflect both of them and currently there's not enough plants downstairs so I'm adding more plants in and I found this bit really lovely because some of the plants I don't use them very often but they are so gorgeous. I really in particular love this big one that I'm moving into the corner of the kitchen slash dining area now. I think that is gorgeous. Um, my the my friend who sent me this challenge, she doesn't have as many packs as I do, so I was limited on the packs I could use, but she has the ones that matter, and that was the important thing. I thoroughly enjoyed building with the Blooming Rooms kit because I've not built with it before. So I, I really enjoyed that. And now I'm just trying to find a rug for the lounge that kind of fits in. And as I watched this back, I realized that I don't think this place looks like a house for Elder Sims. It looks a bit, in my head, it looks a bit young. So I'm not sure what my friend will think of this but we shall see if she likes it or not and here I'm trying to find a new dining table because the island living one just looked quite shabby so I was trying to find a new one um, that wouldn't look so shabby and I found the parenthood one I decided to use with the high school years chairs around it. I love high school years as a pack. The build stuff is so gorgeous. And as we will see, I used so much high school years furniture in this build. Both bedrooms, I think, have high school years beds and furniture in. The desk over there and the chair are from high school years. 
the chairs around the dining table in high school years. I just love it, it's such a wonderful pack. And here I was trying to fit in a bathroom and as we can see here this is where I decided that the laundry nook would be a bathroom and yet I completely forgot to add a door. So that was not very good. <laughs> But here it is, I'm just going to add the wallpaper in and add a toilet. And yeah, we'll move on to the landscaping in a second and I will be quiet and let you enjoy the rest of the speed build in peace. And I will come back and do a tour once the landscaping is done.
Okay, so here we are in autumn, so all the plants are dead, which is lovely. But here is the finished house, so we can see the balcony area here. There's a little grill area here, all the leaves. To be fair, that is the kind of vibes I like autumnal, but I just wish all of these weren't dead. But here we have a little path going up to the house, a little patio area with a barbecue and a table and here are some lavender plants which look nicer in the summer and then if we go in there's a little desk area here with some clutter um, a bookshelf with some more clutter on it and a little rug to welcome you in and here is the living room area with my sim watching something here. I used island living furniture because I thought it fitted the vibe and some plants here um, for the bohemian sim, island living tables and a bit of nice big TV for them. Through into the, di the dining room and kitchen we've got a lovely dining room dining table here with a fruit bowl, gorgeous plant in the corner and a lovely rug under the table and then into the kitchen we've got lots of clutter around, a little tea area here. I'm going to delete the bread bin because I've realised that they don't have a counter to cook on. But a lovely sink, the parenthood appliances here and a lovely rug under the sink here. I think I've said the word lovely a million times and if we put the wall up they've got this absolutely stunning piece of art here and a bathroom with no door so I'm just going to add the door now. I used the Seasons doors upstairs, so I'll use the Seasons door again. Uh, there we go. Fabulous. And then if we move through to the upstairs, so here's the staircase here. And we move through. We've got the first room on the left. As you come up the stairs is the Bohemian room. So tons of plants, fairy lights across the wall plants across the windows, plants in the corner, plants hanging from the ceiling and an easel here so she can paint and I used this bed from high school years because I thought that the bedding absolutely fitted the um, it fitted what was being requested of it and I layered up these rugs from laundry day I think they look quite cute and then here is her ensuite bathroom with the snowy escape shower that she can just walk straight through and a toilet and then if we go across the hallway here, we've got the fancy the fancy bedroom. I'm not sure if I would call this fancy, but I think it's quite nice. I like it. Uh, we've got these curtains, which I really struggled with the curtains. If you saw in the speed build, it did take a couple tries to find the curtains. High school years bed again, because I just think they're stunning. And high school years furniture in this one as well. And this lovely heart on the wall and the fancy bedroom is the one that has the balcony access so here are her dead plants on the balcony um, she's got some little hanging plants here and a big flower box here and a rocking chair for her to read on and that is the full house I used island living wallpaper on the outside because I thought it fitted the vibes of it being a beach house and I thought that the shade of this blue roof tile here really matched so I'm quite proud of it I think it's quite nice, especially for my first time trying something like this, especially the Bohemian room. It really was not what I'm used to building like, but I think it looks quite nice. And I think I will try and build maybe like a plant 
a house specifically for a sim who's obsessed with plants and try and have it all look quite bohemian so let me know if you'd like to see that and if we turn around here look they're right on the beach it's almost like living in Guernsey being that close to the beach anyway I hope you enjoyed this video let me know what you think about the build and let me know if you've got any more questions about myself um, in the comments because I would be interested to know what people want to know this house is on the gallery it's here um, I've put a little description of what the requirements were and the house so I was only allowed to use up to 45,000 simoleons it's not even 41,000 simoleons it does use a lot of packs I'm afraid but I think we'll, we can all agree it's worth all the packs because it does look really nice so I'll just share that now perfect I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in a few days for the next episode of the Hardwick Legacy Challenge Bye!